Ecclesiastes 3.2 says, There's a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted. Ecclesiastes 3.2 Each and every single person that we see is eventually going to die, and at some point down the road, unless the Lord tarries, we all will reach the grave. And it is important for us to constantly meditate upon this because once we go to the grave, to that place, we cannot revert back and change what it is that has been done within time because we know that for everything, there is both time and judgment. And we need to assess and constantly reflect, what is it that I have been doing? What have I been doing the last few weeks and months and even years? Have I fallen into this state by which profitability for God and his kingdom and his glory has been virtually non-existent? Because the reality is, is all of us are going to eventually die. And whatever was done in time will be brought before God Almighty on that final day where we will have to give an account. And so it is important for us to constantly reflect that time is not guaranteed. We must have a long-term vision, and may it be God's vision on what he has given for us, but may we not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Sufficient is the day of its own troubles. And so we need to focus and reflect on what is it I am doing today that, and what is it building towards for the future? Because compounding in, just as compounding interest occurs, so it occurs, uh, just as it occurs with fi finances, so it occurs with our lives. Is what we're doing building for something of greater gain and greater glory given to God? And by gain, we mean, is what we are doing, are we gaining wisdom? Are we gaining love? Are we gaining the resources and what is needed to properly equip our family and the next generation and even those who are our Barnabases on equal ground? Are we doing what we can to truly love others and to extend a helping hand and to do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Because when we die, we cannot revert. And the most uh, sad thing that many senior citizens go through, especially going through hospice and reaching the latter months, um, years, if they're permitted, of their lives, is they begin to reflect. And through their reflection, they have regret. They wish they would have done more. They wish they would have prayed more. They wish they would have outreached more. They wish they would have pressed in to God, to their God-given talents and what God was directing them to. They wish they could go back and change, but they cannot do so. And we need to learn the art of, re of reflection right now, as opposed to having it when we're on our deathbed, thinking back and wishing we would have done more. It's never too late to start again. And we know from the book of Joel that God can make up for wasted and lost years. God can do more in a few hours than we can do in a few weeks. He can do more in a few days than we can do in a few years. God can make up for the lost time, and it is important for us to reflect now on where our time is being utilized, because eventually, uh, all of us who are born, we will die, and we will need to answer for what we did in this life. And so that is why it is important to also know that there is a time for planting, and also a time for plucking what is planted. Are we planting uh, proper seeds into the next generation? Are we, uh, if we're older per se, are we extending our wisdom and knowledge gain? Are we encouraging the next generation? Are we wanting to be a mentor? Are we seeking to disciple others, whether they're our age or younger or older, whatever they may be? Are we desiring to plant into people what it is that Christ has planted into us? Because when we're born again, when we believe Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, and we have repented of our sins, we receive the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the fruit bearer. He gives us love, joy, peace, and patience, kindness, and goodness, and faithfulness, and gentleness, and self control. And we need to be willing to not only grow in those, develop and see an ever increase as we abide in the vine, uh, who, whom is Christ, but also we need to desire to extend that out to others by ways of how we operate, how we speak, how we act, 
and how we do all that it is that we are bound to do. And we need to make sure that we are planting those seeds into other people, that they may extend the same thing and see Christ through us so that they also may seek God, become born again, receive the Holy Spirit, and do the same. Because we are called to make disciples of men, and as we make disciples, those disciples should make disciples, and we should see a revolutionary revival, not done in our strength, but done in the power of the Holy Spirit. So may we understand that it's important to keep planting. There's a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted. Whatever that is in relationships, which we have already mentioned, which is the most important, or maybe it's in finances, or maybe it's in what God has given us and our skill sets and our passions. Maybe he's calling us to write music. Maybe he's calling us to write books. Maybe he's calling us to be uh, an outreach in a certain ministry. Maybe he's calling us to start up a nonprofit or a business. Maybe he's calling us to teach other people or to host a Bible study at our own home and invite others in. Whatever it is, we need to plant. And how do we plant? We after, And what do we do after we plant? After we plant, we prepare. We plant the seeds, we throw out the fleece, we ask God, is this from you? And if we get confirmation from him, then we continue to prepare. And as time goes on, what we have planted should begin to increase whatever manifestation that is. And at some point, it is appropriate to pluck what is planted. It is appropriate to, if we have saved finances for a long period of time, then that has compounded over time. We can pluck what is planted. That is completely fine. At other times, maybe what we planted has taken its course in its certain season. Maybe we've been living in the same area for a few years. We've done the Lord's will with it. But now it's the time to pluck ourselves from that location. And God is calling us to a different location, whether that's outside the state or being a missionary in a different country or getting a job across seas, whatever it is, there always is a time to pluck what is planted. And we need to make sure we are seeking God, his wisdom and his will, because he will guide us by his spirit as to when it is time to plant and when it is time to pluck what is planted, because whatever gets plucked that is planted originally, and if it's done for the profitability of God and his kingdom, we eventually will be brought somewhere else where we will plant something new and God will continue to work through that. So may we understand that we who have been born, which is all of us human beings who are alive and existing right now, will eventually die. And may we live and self-reflect on where we are spending our time. And may we ask God to show us where it is that he wants us to plant, what it is he wants us to plant, and also what, uh, what should be plucked that has already been planted, whether for good or maybe there have been some bad habits, bad habitual uh, states of sin, whatever it is that we have planted, but which the Holy Spirit needs to pluck and pluck it from its roots from within us in order that we may properly plant what is pure and righteous and godly and for God alone.